but thou art holy. O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel, but thou art holy. O thou that inhabits the praises of Israel, and one version says, the praises of your people. You may be seated in the presence of God. But thou art holy. And that's where we left off on last week, um, the holiness of God. And you inhabit the praises of your people. Dear hearts, we learned on last week, and if you were not here, you're welcome to visit our Facebook or YouTube page. We learned last week that there was a animal called the kangaroo rat. And the kangaroo rat, we learned, was the only animal that we currently know that can live its life without ever drinking water. And we said that it is strange that some Christians who profess to know the Lord can actually journey through their Christian sojourn without ever truly praising God. So we lifted up a sermon topic on last week. What comes down when the praises go up? What comes down when the praises go up? Kangaroo rat living his life without ever drinking water. And some folks come to church every week, every Sunday or every Wednesday and act like God owes them something. Act like they are the Alpha and the Omega and act like when they woke up, they tap God and say, now it's time for you to rise. But we serve a God who does not sleep or slumber. And it is because of him that he allowed our golden moments to roll on. And so there were a few people who kept me company on last week and said, I am not in the number who refuses to praise God. I'm a part of the loud crowd. You hear me? I'm not a part of the silent few. I am a part of the loud crowd, and I will praise God in church. I will praise God on 42nd Street. I will praise God in Walmart. I will praise God at work. I will praise God at the airport. I will praise God even in front of my enemies because you don't know what I have come through. You don't know you were not there. You don't know when and you don't know where. You just don't know how good God has been to me. No, nah, no, nah, you don't know that. You don't know that. And you can try your best to criticize my praise, but it won't work anymore. There was a time when it used to work because I used to care about your opinion of me. Now your opinion of me does not matter. I only care about giving God glory because he gave me life. He, 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 he gave me life. Now, it is true, dear hearts, that Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, um, lists the first recording, the first recorded call to worship. The first recorded call to worship was indeed in Genesis Chapter 1, verse 1. But the first time that the word praise was used was actually in the 29th chapter of Genesis. And it was not used in generally the way that we understand it to be used. 
I trust you all are taking notes or writing it in your mental capacity. Because the first time that praise was used in scripture, the first time it was from Leah. And Leah bore her fourth son, and she said, this time, I will praise the Lord. Now, her boring her fourth son, and she's saying, this time, I will praise the Lord, it was an act simply of thanks. Do you hear me? It was an act simply of what? Thanks. And that word in the Hebrew is what we call Judah. Judah meaning praise in Hebrew. But understand that it was actually not necessarily how we pronounce it, Judah, because in 1524, the J was introduced to our alphabet. It was actually a Y, and that's what we, it's actually called Yada or Yuda. The word Judah, Yada or Judah, and it was a response in simply God being thanked by Leah for her fourth son. Hear me close. That was a choice for her to do that. She chose to tell God, thank you. Do you all hear me right now? It was a choice. The Judah is a choice praise. It is a thanks praise. It, 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 it is you deciding whether you're going to do it or not. But what we see in the 22nd Psalm is not a Judah or Judah or Yada praise. This praise is, in fact, what we call an halal praise. Now, a halal praise is different than a Judah praise. A Judah praise means you made the decision to do it, whether you feel good or not. Like some folk who didn't come to church this morning, they didn't feel like coming. They chose to stay home. But when you are in a halal praise, you don't have a choice in the matter. You know why? Because you recognize and you realize how good God is to you, whether you feel good or not. It is a halal praise. It is where we actually get the word, the compound word, hallelujah from. Hallelujah is actually a compound word. Halal meanings to, means to praise with everything that you got. And the Jah or the Jah, the Jah comes from Jehovah. So halal, people have said, hallelujah is the highest praise because it is a praise with everything you got to a God who gave you everything. And so many of us realize we ain't got a choice in that. Listen, if God gave you breath, that's reason enough to give him back something he gave you. So with the same breath that he gave you and put it in your mouth, the book says, and his praise, his halal, shall continually be in my mouth. Because I got a mouth and because I got breath, I owe God a praise. I owe God this. I don't have a choice to give it to him. He didn't have a choice. He could have had a choice whether he woke me up this morning. He could have had a choice whether he started me on my way. But since he gave me and made me his choice, I choose to bless him whether I feel good or whether I feel bad, whether I'm happy or whether I'm sad, whether I'm up or whether I'm down, even if I'm level to the ground, God deserves my praise. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. So I got, I, 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 I want you all to know, halal is a celebration. Uh, I can't help it. 
kind of praise. And it's not for people, it's for Jah or Yahweh. Y'all missed that. Halal is a celebration. It's giving you the best that I got, and it ain't for people, it's for Jah. Did you all hear that? Halal is a celebration. That's why the book says, make a joyful noise, watch this, unto the Lord. Now, you ain't giving this to nobody else. You giving this to the Lord, so you ought to give him the best that you got because he already gave you the best that he got. That's why we thank God for Jesus. Jesus, name so sweet you can taste it in peaches. Jesus. I don't praise for folks no more. No, 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 no. Because folks will really criticize your praise. You mean to tell me she in church praising God like that? You mean to tell me it don't take all of that? You don't care. You don't know. You weren't there. You don't know what it takes. God brought me from not a mighty long way, but he brought me all the way. And so every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. So every time I turn around, I'm going to bless him too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every time I turn around, And see, that's why this can't be for folks. This is why, this is, let me tell you, this is why I can't, this, this can't be for people. This can't be for people because folks are fickle. You know, you know, folks are fair weather. This can't be for folks no more. Don't you ever nowadays, don't you, su- no, no more, no more, no more. Don't you ever suffer again from the disease to please people. You make sure your praise pleases God. It don't take all of that. You don't tell me what it take. So that's the story. Now here's the study. We said on last week, and you cannot take it back because you agreed with your amens last week, that there, there are some things that come down when the praises go up. And last week, the first thing we said that the the, the first thing that comes down is he gives us his attributes. He gives us his attributes. Now, I only gave you all one on last week. There are actually 12 divine attributes of God. Won't go over them today, but there's actually 12 divine attributes of God. And believe it or not, those 12 attributes of God are found in Genesis 1-1. 12 of them in one verse. And we understand that 12 is the government of God. It is what we call his theodicy. His theodicy. But I only want to share that the first thing that we get when the praises go up is that he gives us his holiness. He gives us his holiness. And we discussed how there are angels, higher level order of angels, called the seraphim and angels have a dual responsibility the first responsibility that they have is in the presence of God and when it gets to be too much for them they dismiss themselves from the presence of God and they go to man so the book says that in the presence of God they're shouting holy but when they come into the presence of man they're in a humanistic being. What does that mean? Because the book says he shall give his angels charge over thee. To do what? Keep thee in all thy ways. And so what theologians believe is that for about 10,000 years that the angels are in the presence of God doing nothing but praising him. And 10,000 years to us sound like 10,000 years, but remember as unto God, it's a shorter period of time. 
And the reason why it's a shorter period of time, because angels, they sing one song, and that's the song of worship. We sing another song. That's the song of redemption. Did you hear me? And so when the angels are in his presence for a short period of time, then they dismiss themselves from his presence and come to ours. Man, many of you all have even may have even experienced an angelic visitation. So these angels given charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. In the presence of God, they go. Then they come to us, back to the presence of God, then to us. And the reason we understand last week is because they can't stay too long in his presence. You hear me? They can't, they can't stay too long in his presence. The presence of God sometimes can be so strong that you forget where you are. Did you hear me? Now, I'm not talking about goosebumps. I'm talking about the authentic presence of God. When the presence of God comes, sometimes there's even no you. You don't understand what I'm talking about, do you? The Bible says that Enoch walked with God and was translated. He was no more. God can be so much God that there ain't no more you. And you know you're on the right path because folks don't see you now how they used to see you. It ain't you. It's the God in you. And the God in you actually makes you love your enemies. The God in you makes you sometimes be quiet when you want to say something. Do you hear me what I'm saying in here? The God in you is the Jesus in you that's shining his light. And sometimes I bless God because some of the things that God allows me to experience, the way I respond to ain't the James J. Way, J, J. Bolton way that I, I should have responded. It's the J-E-S-U-S -S way. Because Jesus sometimes will tell you, hold up, wait a minute, this battle ain't yours, it's mine. And so that puts us into the place of God's holiness. You hear me? So the first thing we get when the praises go up is his attributes in the form of his holiness. And we understand that as we are in the presence of God and these angels, these seraphims, we see that as they are in his presence, don't you miss this, they're in his presence and all day and all night they are shouting, Holy. Did you get that? They are shouting holy. Now, the Bible says that they shout holy three times. Now, some can say that's one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. I'm all right with that. But I believe that what happens is when they are shouting holy, because the Bible says that as they shout holy, they actually also bow. So what I believe, and don't shout, just be quiet so I can go to my second point, all right? What I believe, dear hearts, is they see the glory and the essence of God. And they shout the Hebrew word hagias as they see how holy he is, and they realize how dirty they are. You mean to tell me a holy God will allow humanity to come into his presence and still want your praise? That, when I think of that, and I see him still working my life, I can't help but... I can't help but bow. But that's only a part of it. Y'all, let me preach this quick, quick, quick. That's only part of it because what you do is you see what he did and you recall how he blessed you. And you think of maybe the fact that he helped you pay your last bill. And you say, holy. And you what? You bow. Now, while you're down there. If you got a mind while you're down there, you're going to think of something else he did. And when you do, you're going to rise back up and shout, holy. 
And while you're down a second time, you're going to think about how he kept your family. And you can't help but rise again and shout. Y'all sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. So when your praises go up, the first thing that comes down is his attributes in the form of holiness. Now, the second thing that comes down is this. When praises go up, the second thing that comes down, I love this one, is his attention. Not just his attributes, but his attention. That speaks to his handiwork. Uh-oh. Our praise is irresistible to God. And it's amazing to know that a God who's above is interested in us down here. And you know why he's interested? Thank you for asking. Because he's interested in the experience you had because he had it too. Don't you move too fast. Don't you move too fast. Because this psalm Scholars believe it's a psalm of prophetic nature. Why? Because this psalm presents Jesus in the Old Testament as Savior to come in the New Testament. Y'all hear? The psalm begins by portraying the rejection and abandonment of Christ in verse 1 and 2. Y'all stick, look in the book. It's in the book. It's in the book. And after the rejection and abandonment, it is called a theocracy, which is an epiphany of Jesus in the Old Testament when he didn't come physically yet into the new. So this psalm shows Christ produced in this psalm. And it starts with his suffering. Y'all with me? This psalm starts with the suffering of Christ. But in the third verse, a declaration is given. It starts with suffering. But then something is said. Don't let your suffering keep you silent. Don't you know the devil want to keep you quiet? I said, don't let your suffering keep you silent. Hear me closely. Let your scars be your sermon. Don't hide what you've been through. Let it be known that I used to be that. Now I'm this. And everything that I went through made me to be the person that you see right now. And I ain't all I'm going to be. But I thank God I'm not who I used to be. So this psalm. We see in Psalm, if your Bible's still open, we see in Psalm 21 and 1, we see someone being forsaken by God. We also see that in Matthew 27, 46. In Psalm 22, verse 7 through 8, we see someone ridiculed by their enemies. We also see that in Luke 23, 35. In Psalm 22, 16, we see someone whose hands and feet were pierced. We also see that in John 20, 27. In Psalm 22, 18, we see someone whose clothes is being gambled for. We also see that in Matthew 27, 35. But this psalmist and Jesus make a declaration. I was in it. But now, I'm on the other side of it. 
God will never bring you to something he can't pull you through. So you may be, you may be broken. You may be, you may be beaten. You may be, you may be battered. But if you're beaten, broken, and battered, don't let nothing stop you from praising. You may have lost a lot, but don't let that stop you from praising God. Because God will never let what you lost be the best you ever had. Whatever you lose, don't you lose your praise. And people could look at you and wonder why you're praising God in the condition that you're in. They will wonder why you're so, uh, so, so boisterous, why you get so loud, why you lift your hands, why you do your dance, why you run around the church. And you can tell them, I've already been to the water. I've already been baptized. My soul been converted and I feel all right. Lest I hold you too long. When, when praises go up, his, his attributes, which speaks to his holiness, comes down. When, when praises go up, his, his, his attention, which speaks to his handiwork, comes down. But third and finally, when, 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 praises, when praises go up, his attendance comes down. That speaks to himself. Not just his attributes. Not just his attention. But his attendance comes down. The hearts, the B clause of this verse says, he inhabits the praises of his people. God has no bounds. That speaks to his transcendence. That means that God can go beyond any limit that you have. He has no limitations, but your praise is his invitation. He don't have any limitations. But when you praise, that's an invitation. You invite him to inhabit because you made the praise your priority. You didn't make your problem your priority. You made your praise your priority. Now, the Greek word and Hebrew word for inhabit means this. The word inhabit means to sit, to remain, and to dwell. So your praise, when it's right, because sometimes praise without pain ain't nothing but a performance. But when your praise is right, the Bible says that he will sit remain and dwell. God is not even interested in how you sound. He's more interested in what you say. Y'all with me? So, so I'm looking around the room. I'm, 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 I'm perusing the church. And, and there's about several folks who ain't moved since service started. You ain't raised your hand since service started. You ain't said amen since service started. And I wonder, did you have a place to sleep last night? Or did you forget to take your medicine this morning? Because if you got hands, they should have at least clapped at some time. If you got hands, they should at least went up at some time. 
If you got feet, they should at least pat the floor sometime. If you got feet, you should at least stood up at some point because the Bible says that everything that got breath ought to praise the Lord. Now, before I get too happy, listen. Keep standing, keep standing. Make the folks sitting down mad because I'm short and they can't see me. Keep standing. Keep standing. If you're standing, keep standing. Because there, there's something I need to share with you all. Um, if you got a reasonable portion, if you got a reasonable portion of health, if you got a reasonable portion of strength, if you got just something that can come out of your mouth, if you got strength in your legs, if you got a hump in your back, if you got shoes on your feet, if you got clothes on your shoulder, if you got eyes, sight in your eyes, if you got smelling in your nose, if you got wiggling in your fingers, if you got a twinkle in your toes, you got a right to praise the Lord. Now, I know God has been good to all y'all, but let me just talk about me for a minute. He woke me up this morning. He put me to sleep last night. He gave me somewhere to live. He helped me pay my bills. I ain't bragging. I'm just testifying. God been good to me. God is good to me. And neighbor, I ain't the only one that God been good to. He been good to you too. Those who standing, keep standing. Those who sitting, keep sitting. Because there's one more thing I got to tell you. Now, y'all know that kangaroo rat? That kangaroo rat. I wondered why the kangaroo rat could live and never drink water. Now, if I run up at this church, somebody just come and get me. The reason why the kangaroo rat can live and not drink water is because the way its body is formed. It gets its moisture from the environment that it's in. All the kangaroo rat got to do is move a little bit. And when the kangaroo rat moves, the moisture that's in the air gets on him and helps him live. The Bible says his praise shall continually be in my mouth. But it also says it inhabits you. So the statement is not when the praises go up, the blessings come down. The real phrase is when the praises go up, the blesser comes down. And your praise is moisture for the atmosphere. So if you want God to soak you in his blessings, praise him. If you want God to add years to your life, Praise him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, but not just in my mouth, in my feet. Not just in my feet, but in my hands. I will, I shall, I must praise him. Praise him on the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sultry and harp. Praise him with the temple and the dance. Let everything, 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 every, 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 